All right, what's up guys? Um, I wanted to make this video for you to kind of show you um, what a excess proceeds list looks like or a surplus funds list, an overage list, whatever you want to call it. They're all the same. There's multiple names for them. Um, but if you're wondering about excess funds lists or excess proceeds lists, and you're probably learning, learning, trying to get into overages and learn the business and stuff. And so hopefully this video will be a, a benefit to you as you're looking for lists, because if you're looking for lists, then it means you're looking for leads in order to do cases with. So I'm going to show you some examples of lists and um, just kind of walk you through what you're looking at. So uh, here's one example of an excess proceeds list. You can see here, um, there's some different names on here. So we have the trust door. This is the previous homeowner, okay? So this is the name of the previous homeowner. We have a deposit date, which is when the date of the funds were deposited in the account of wherever they're being held. And then we have the amount received, the amount dispersed, and then the balance. So you know, the amount received is the original amount that was generated from the foreclosure sale or the tax foreclosure sale. And then the amount dispersed would be if any funds have been paid out. Okay. And then the balance would be what's left. So you see here, you know, this top one, for example, the amount received was 108. The balance is still 108. And so no disbursements have been made since April of 2019. Um, you also have a civil action number. So this means most likely this is a, this, well, this is a case number. So most likely these funds are being held in the court system because there's a, ca a case number associated with it. So if, if you see this, you know, a case civil action number, then it means that the funds are probably with the courts. Um, one thing about lists, sometimes they're not always updated. So for example, this top one, um, the deposit date is April 1st, but maybe there was, you know, some activity with this case in October of 2019, and maybe the funds have been dispersed. Some lists do update often. A lot of lists don't update. And so that's why sometimes it's um, critical to understand that because you may have to do some more digging, you know, looking at the case, looking to see the activity to see if any of funds have been paid out. Okay. So this is one example of an excess proceeds list or surplus funds list. Um, here's another example we have here. Um, you know, again, you, you have the names of the people that are of the funds. Um, this is the, the property address of the um, property that was sold at a foreclosure sale. The court held amount when it was sold, and again, the case number. So this is a good list because here's the thing with lists, guys. The um, data that you want is the name of the homeowner that owned the property and the address of the property that was sold. At a bare minimum, that's what you want. Um and then of course, you know, how much money is available. So like this one, for example, there's $59,000. $59, um, and the sale date was 2018. And then again, a case number. Now, again, going back to what I just mentioned before, some lists are updated, some aren't. And so this shows 59 available, but this is also over a year old. And so it is possible that these funds are no longer there. That in this time period, the funds could have been paid out. Um, that's why it's important to know the case numbers as well, if the funds are being held by a court. Um, so there's that. Here is another list of tax sale overages, surplus funds, excess proceeds. Um, this one you can see, it says it was updated on November 18th, 2019. So that's good. Um, you have the name of the buyer. This is the, now don't, this is important. This is from a tax sale. So this is the name of the person that bought the property at the tax sale. We don't care about that because that's not who we want. What we want to know is who the owner was at the time of the sale. And so we do have that on this, this list. We also have parcel numbers. Parcel numbers can be very useful because then you can do additional research on properties using uh, public records, such as liens. Um, 
again, we have the property address. It's not a full address, but you know, using Google, we can figure out, you know, where the city was and stuff like that. We're also using the parcel number. So this is a good list. And then we also have the excess funds amount um, and then the tax sale month and year. So this is great. Um, one thing about list is not all lists are found online. Sometimes you have to request these lists from, you know, the counties or the courts or whoever. Um, and I mentioned how to do that and teach how to do that in my course. You can go to overagecourse.com and learn more about that. So that's something that you should also keep into consideration is um, not all lists are online. You do have to do some work and sometimes you have to request these lists. Um, sometimes there's a cost to that. It's usually pretty minimal, but sometimes you can't get a list for free. Sometimes you have to pay the county or the court to generate that list for you. Um, the thing is with this business, you know, every county is different and every state has different laws. And so in the overage business, um, there's no just, I mean, there's principles that will set you up for success, but there's different um, laws and regulations and methods to obtaining, you know, lists, submitting claims, all that good stuff. So that's important to realize too. Um, here's another list I'll show you. You'll notice this list is a little different. This is actually a spreadsheet. This list is different because this is a list that I created myself of overages. Okay. Um, you can see here I have property address, homeowner, um, you know, who sold, who conducted the foreclosure sale. These are foreclosure surplus funds. Then I have the opening bids, winning bids, and the overage amount, the approximate overage amount. And then a bunch of other information that's not usually necessary. But um, sometimes this is necessary in this business is sometimes there is no list and you have to create your own list. This is mostly for mortgage overages. Um, and so in certain states, you just can't get a list. You have to create your own. How do you do that? Well, by tracking foreclosure sales and, and seeing what, what was owed versus, you know, what it sold for and stuff like that. Okay. So, and then I also have, you know, different months and I just, I create my own list and I like to create my own list one because, you know, it cuts down on competition um, because, you know, some of these other lists that I showed you, like these ones, these are all online. And if the lists are online, that means anyone can have access to them, which means there's probably more competition to deal with. But when I create my own lists, you know, I know that I'm the only one that has access to this. Now, I'm not the only one that has access to the data, but most people won't take the time to create their own lead lists or overage lists. And so that is a way that you can um, overcome competition in this business is by creating your own lists. And again, I teach people how to create their own lists, how to generate their own leads in my course. And that's at www.overagecourse.com. Um, so hopefully this is helpful to you guys, you know, showed you a couple different lists. Um, sometimes counties don't have these lists, even for tax sales. And so, um, but there's a ways around that to where you can still figure out if there's overages, you know, if a, um, if a county doesn't have an excess funds list or a tax sale overage list or a surplus funds list, you can still figure out if there's surplus funds being held by the county. Um, and again, I, I teach that to people. So it's just, a, you just have to ask for some different information and kind of, um, you know, use different words when you're requesting information, because here's the reality guys, there's a conflict of interest. What do I mean by that? A lot of states have, um, laws in place where if these funds are not claimed in a certain amount of time then they become the property of the county or of the state government. And so you can imagine that these counties, deep down, they don't want people recovering their money because this is a source of revenue for them. Um, what I have found in this business is they will send out notice. They send out notice to the homeowners that there's money available. But here's the catch. 
when a property sells at a foreclosure, whether a mortgage foreclosure or a tax sale foreclosure, where do they send the notice to? They usually send a letter to the house that was sold. And this notice could be weeks after the sale. And so by the time the notice arrives, do you think the homeowner still lives there? Usually not the case. And if they haven't provided a forwarding address or anything like that, um, they never get the notice and they never know the money's there. And then as time goes on, these funds are then forfeited to the county governments or to the state governments and um, they're lost forever, basically. So you will get pushback when you're from counties, when you're requesting this type of information, they will not want to give it to you because they know that if you're successful and find these people and get money for them, that you're taking money out of, that you're taking away money that could potentially become the government's. So don't be surprised when you receive pushback from people at the county governments or the courts when they don't want to give this information to you. However, it's all public information, so they have to give it to you. All right, that's it for today. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys, you know, showing you some examples of lists of surplus funds, tax sale overages, um, and again, showing you creating your own lists and some of the pros and cons between gathering lists from the county versus creating your own lists. We went over that. What else can I teach you? Um, that's pretty much it guys. Um, again, I do teach people how to, what to say, you know, in order to get these lists from the counties. I also teach people how to create their own lead lists. Again, that's in my course. And, um, if you want to learn more about this business, the tax sale overage business or the excess proceeds business and how you can help these people get money that's owed to them and how you can create an additional stream of income for yourself at the same time while helping homeowners. Uh, you can learn more about how to get started and about my story at www.overagesyndicate.com. Um, and I'll just show you that real quickly. So here's the one website overage course. This is just if you're interested in getting the course, but if you're really interested about learning the strategy, and kind of the behind the scenes and how I got started and what it did for me and how it changed my life, then you can go here to overagesyndicate.com and you'll just enter your name and email and you'll um, have access to a series of videos where I go in deep discovering the strategy. So um, hopefully this was beneficial for you and also going over the different kinds of lists and um, let me know your questions below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.